here this session, we're going to do Chrome extensions. Uh, I've done in the past the Chrome Tastic. Uh, so, the session, what we're going to go over is again extensions that you can put into Chrome. Chrome is the web browser. So, if you use Internet Explorer or Firefox, it's time to move over to Chrome. Um, so, extensions, what extensions are, it's going to personalize your experience, web browsing experience. This link will take you to this presentation. And so go ahead and make a copy of it, and you can follow along. The great thing about Google Slides, if you want to take notes, just write down in the comments, you can take notes on the individual extensions that we're going to go over. So this is, like I said, uh, how many extensions I can get through in 60 minutes. So it's going to be kind of fast. I'm going to show a lot of extensions that you can use. So it's great to take the notes maybe and go, hey, I can use this this way or that way. How many of you are Google schools, Google Apps for Education districts? Good. So as you know, things are constantly updating and changing. And you really don't know. Like last week, I started a presentation in the morning, and I was introducing how to share things. And in the afternoon, they changed the look on how to share things. Was there a notification? No. Um, so it was interesting. And, uh, it, it just dawned on me also, speaking of Google Docs, um, when you have people come on, you see those bubbles, and they say anonymous camel or something. It just dawned on me, I'm kind of anonymous right now. I didn't introduce myself. Uh, my name is Brian Briggs, um, and uh, I'm a director of innovation and technology up in Plumas Lake. Um, so, and I'm here presenting on Google Chrome uh, and the Chrome extensions. I'm also a CAPQ board member, so welcome again. Um, so back to Google Chrome. So Chrome is the web browser uh, that it's also standard on Chromebooks. If you're using Chromebooks, that's what you're using. So extensions. Again, extensions is just another feature you can add on to your browser. They kind of look like this. I put the border down here. So it kind of gets carried away. Uh, so like you'll see when I bring up my toolbar, you'll see it's, it gets crazy long. Um, but it's great features where you can turn some on and off when you want to use them or not. Uh, so again, it just personalizes and adds, adds functionality. So as we go through some of them, uh, think about how they can help your job make things you know, work smarter, not harder. And possibly, how can this be used for students? All right, so how that can be done. All right, so we are going to start off with maintenance. So I don't know how many times you've seen these programs, and you just download them. And now you have all this on there and go, how do you remove them? All right. So first, before we start adding a bunch, I want to show you how you add some and how you take them off. All right. So let me go to a web browser. So to find extensions, if you, just, you can go to the Google search. And if you do Chrome Web Store, this is one way you can browse through. So Chrome Web Store. And so down towards the bottom, extensions. I'm just going to add one and remove it in case you, if we're not familiar with it. So uh, let's see, Pocket here. So this first one's Pocket. It's a great extension. You, know, you can save things and read them later. You can also send them to mobile devices so you can read them later, like on your phone, in your waiting room somewhere. So all you do is come over here where it says free and click the plus, and it's checking. It's going to ask you, is it OK? And go ahead and hit add. And there it is. And it will pop up right on your toolbar. So it's right up there. Okay. So then whenever you go to a website, you just click on that. It's almost like a button, and it will save that website for you. All right, so now it's installed, but if you go back and go, wait, I don't want it. You know, I, I, it's, it was great at the time, but the functionality, I, I don't really see it. So over on the far right of your browser, uh, it looks like the hot dog up there. That's kind of like your settings. So if you click on that, and if you go to your settings, there's extensions. And you're going to see all the extensions I have tied to my login. And so that was Pocket. So it's in alphabetic order. H I O. Oop. Where is. Where'd it go? 
save to pocket. So right now it's enabled. If I, if I don't want to use it right now, I can just unclick enable. And so I still have it, but it's just not turned on. So whenever I want to turn it back on, I can just hit X, the checkbox, and it'll turn it back on. But if I'm not going to use it at all, what do you think I'm going to hit? The trash can. So that will take it off. Are you sure? Yes, let's remove. You can always go back to that store to grab it again if you want. But so right now, it's just not right on here. Um, the other great thing with the Google Chrome, so I can use all of these here. And I'm, by, I'm doing all these extensions on my computer here. But when I go back to my office and I sign on, you can see I'm signed on here. Back at my office, it's going to grab all those extensions and it's going to follow me whatever device I jump onto. It's because I'm signed on here. If you're not signed on, you just go up to the hot dogs and go down here and says sign in. And you can link all your data. So then wherever you go, whatever device, um, you just hop on, you log in. Like the Chromebooks, I can pull one out of the classroom, log on, and I'll get all these extensions. So it's great for your students because whatever they log on to, they're going to have all their stuff with them. Yes? If you have multiple Google accounts, yes. like probably a lot of us do, mm -hmm. On each, it follows your account, your user. So, yes. <laughs> All right, so those were adding and removing. All right, so let's get going. All right, so uh, what we're going to go over, I grouped them in themes, so we're going to do productivity first. All right, so these are extensions to help productivity. All right, so save to Google Drive is an awesome extension. Um, whenever you're on like a website, like if you see a picture on a website that you want, you can go over that picture if you have this installed. You can double click that picture. And when the menu comes up, it'll say save to Google Drive. And it will save that image into your Google Drive when you're logged in. So instead of going through and copying and saving it to your desktop, it will save automatically Google Drive. This is great for students. Because if they're saving the Google Drive and they're building presentations, they can grab those images from their drive. It's not being saved on the machine. It's being saved into your drive. Uh, the other thing also, up on the toolbar, you're going to see that button too. And you can push it there. If there's like a document, you can hit it and it will save that document you're viewing. When you copy, if you've copied this presentation, these are all links to the actual extension. So if you click on that, you can go to it and add to it if you want. Easy Bib Tool. This is one, uh, if you're on a page and you're getting references from the page, if you hit the Easy Bib Tool, it's going to take the bibliography and paste it into a, like a spreadsheet in your Google Drive. So when you're citing your sources, uh, you're teaching your students how to do that. Um, it's just, here's this button. You can click it, and it'll show the correct form. You can change it the style within Easy Bib. Uh, speaking of, do you know what grade now citing your sources is that, that start being instructed at? You want to take a guess? Six. Six. Third grade. Uh, it's late second, early third grade. So they're uh, teaching references and citing sources. Save the pocket. We just went over this. Again, you can save articles and videos and more into your pocket, and you can save them later. This is one I love, Ad Blocker Super. It doesn't do anything fancy like saving stuff, but it blocks those ads that you get. It blocks the ads from YouTube video. It blocks ads from Facebook and social media. So they always come out with a new one. So this is Ad Blocker Super, and it's going to block all of those ads on those sites. So you just click at the Chrome, and it's just like a virus blocker. It just runs in the background. You don't really have to worry about it. So you don't have to worry about ads. This is another great one, TechSmith Snagit. This uh, is a standalone program you can buy for computers, and it's pretty expensive. But with the extension, it's free. Um, so for example, let's go ahead and take a screenshot. What it's going to do is screenshot. And let me make sure I have it up here. Let's say I want this picture of the pocket sign. I just click on the Snagit button up here, the extension. 
and I want to just do a region. So drag out what I want to save. So I just want this saved. And I let go. And click. So what it's doing is it's saving. Now it's syncing to my Google Drive. So I'll have a folder in my drive that says TechSmith. And that's where they're going to save all my clips. All right, so it's back in my library now. So this is my TechSmith library on my Google Drive. It's not on my computer. So again, I can do this in a classroom and go back to my desk or whatever and create you know, tutorials that way. Um, so that is TechSmith. Highly recommend it. OK. Also, nowadays, you can do, I think it saves up to 20 seconds of video. So I've been using it also to do little tutorials. Teacher asked me, how do I sign in here? I'll do a quick video, a 20 second video, and I'll just send them the video. And go, this is how you do it. And they're, oh, OK, thank great. Web page screenshot is another one that takes a screenshot of, uh, of what you're working on. It does the whole one. Um, I'm just a little bit more favored to TechSmith, so I'm just a little biased. But not saying this is not bad. Uh, Chrome Speak is great also. Again, this will pretty much, you highlight your page in your document and it will read it to you. It's going to speak it for you. So this is one. There's a lot of them coming out now. So again, this is where you play and explore and find the ones you like. And then you can enable that one and you can maybe uh, discard the other one. So play around, explore. Strict workflow is another good one. Uh, you can set up times where, OK, I'm going to work 25 minutes, distraction free. And then the 25 minutes up, you get this screen down here that says, page block until break time's over. And it does it for five minutes. So for me, it's great because I'm working on my desk. 25 minutes, five's up. I get up and walk around. Um, and then I can come back and start going again, uh, especially when I have deadlines. Um, I need that mental break. Clear history is another one. It just clears your browser history if you need to. A lot of times if I jump onto another computer and I log in with my account, and I don't, you know, it's saving my history where I go to. I can just hit that clear history, sign off, and go, and not worry that it's on uh, someone else's computer. Sorry, I'm going really fast, but I'm flying through. And the strict workflow is a name you all the time, or you have to click it. You click it to start it. So yeah, it's not you just jump on and go, oh, <laughs> you're at home. Come on, I'm not working now. <laughs> uh, extensity is one I use also. What it does is uh, when you have a lot of extensions, instead of going to the settings, I can just go to this button and click on it and turn extensions on and off that I want. So it just eliminates a step. But again, it's, I can turn them on and off on the fly. I just hit the button and find the one I want, turn on and off, and click that. Evernote Web Clipper is another version of like uh, saving websites and images. And it saves it to, if you have Evernote, um, it'll save it to your Evernote account. So that's, uh, that's an Evernote Web Clipper. Again, these links, feel free to play around as I'm going through it. Word count, I'm sure students will love. You got to write an essay 100 words. Oh, at least 100 words. What are they going to do? Uh, so you can just click on this, and it will. You, you click on the button, and it'll tell me how many words you've typed. So basically, it's a word counter. It's kind of like in Microsoft Word, you have that up in the file. Here's just the button, and it'll tell you. And then you just hit close. Clearly is another good one. It also, uh, if you go to a blog, and you know on sometimes blogs you have the ads, and you have other stuff, and it's kind of distracting. Someone for me who has ADD, and then I'm flying all over the place and looking at all this stuff. If you hit clearly, it takes everything else and it just puts it down in a line. So you're not distracted. So it's just like a clean sheet of paper that has all this documentation on it. So App Launcher is help productivity. Is, uh, if you're surfing a web page and all of a sudden, wait, I want to go to my docs real quick. I can click on this button, and it will show all of your apps from your toolbar. And then you can go right to your docs or spreadsheets or wherever you want to record or 
use if you want to get to something right away. Another great one I love, save as PDF. Um, so if there's something online that you want to save as a protective document, you can just right click it and it will have a button and the menu will say save as a PDF and it'll save it to your Google Drive or your desktop. So uh, again, you can read it later and edit it outside of PDF, just copy and paste and stuff. Time warp is another procrastination tool. I'm all about procrastinating. Uh, this will help you get things done. You know, stop checking your Gmail, Facebook, YouTube. That's me, guilty. Here's a uh, site. This for me is a websiter. This is like EasyBib, but this is built right into your browser also. This here, you can just copy. If you click it, it's going to show that citing of that web page you're on. And then you can copy it. Here's where you can set your different ones, APA, Chicago, MLA. And you can copy it right there and then go to maybe your Word document and paste it on there if you need to. Or you can put it in the footnote there. Uh, it just copies it right there. This one here, it says add to bibliography. This one will also open up a spreadsheet and save it into a spreadsheet. So if you're looking at multiple ones and you're on the fly, you can just click it and it will save it onto that spreadsheet in your drive. This is a fabulous one. TLDR. Too long, didn't read. All right, so let's go to, um, ba -ba -ba. let's visit a site that I go to a lot is News ELA. Are you familiar with News, Newsella? Fabulous site. So again, this is news stories. Usually I get a pop-up saying if I want to join. Not yet. All right, so let's go to science. And let's look at this article here, Yosemite's visitors. OK, so we have our article here. And I can scroll down. It's all right there, you know, but it's too long, didn't read. Right up here, the TLDR, I can click on this. So it's reading it for me, pretty much, and it's summarizing it. All right, it's too long, didn't read it. All right, so if I want the short version, this is the summary. If I want the short version of the article, it gives me that. If I want the long version, it'll edit that way, and then it has the original. And on the bottom is find more like this. So it's going to find more articles that are like that. Whoop, it bounced me out. So again, that is too long, didn't read. So uh, again, it was just a simple click of the button. You can go to a website to get a summary of it. Uh, so next one, we're going to go through, uh, th through some accessibility extensions. These are uh, some great ones for students and for yourself. So like this one for me, Open Dyslexia. It open Dyslexic. It puts it in a font, whatever web page you go to. And I don't know how they describe or determine this font. It's supposed to be better for students or people with dyslexia. Uh, so if I go to, let me go back to Newzella. It's going to be my go-to. Colorado students. Let me see where are we. Let me make sure I have it turned on. Where is that? Uh, oh, here we go. Let me turn it on. So this is the one I'm right here. This is that uh, extensity. I just can go and turn it on. And let me go back. And now I have so many i got to find. Let me turn some. Let me turn off Avalanche. See if I can pop it up. Let's see. Is it coming up? Ah, it's not showing up. Ah. I have so many turned on right now, I can't find it. 
But again, it's going to change all the font on this page to that. It's kind of Comic Sansy in a bit, but it's just shaped differently, and it, it helps you focus a little bit more. Um, it'll convert the whole page in that font. Again, how they determine that font, I, I don't know. But it, it seems to work a little bit um, as we're going through there. Other accessible one is SpeechPad. So again, this is, these are ones that they're going to talk to you. So you can highlight or copy what you need on the text, and it will, you just hit playback, and it will play it for you. So that's the SpeechPad one. Announceify is another speech to text. You can change the speed of the audio. If the person, if you want to slow it down, you can for some possibly slow readers. Um, select and speak. Again, this has been a growing trend of being able to highlight what you, talk, what you see on the page and have it read it back to you. And I believe I have one more. Speak it is another one. This one is good here, too, because it can read text in more than 50 languages. I'm heading up to something. I'm building something. So Readability is a web and mobile app that zaps clutter. Again, this is like clearly. All that clutter on the side, it's going to you know, minimize it down to like almost one column of text you can read. It's the official readability extension. All right, so which reminds me of an app smash. You know what app smashes are? When you take two apps, you run something through, and then you run it again. So this is going to be a, the Chrome edition of App Smash. What we'll do is we'll run, oop, we're going to run something through Speak It and Readability. All right, so let me go Newzella. So it's this one here. So I'm going to go through Readability here. Uh, this is the couch. Read comfortably. Read now. So it's cleaning it up. And we'll reload it. And now oh, there's my dyslexic font. All right. So now what I can do is highlight this. I can right click it. And right here it says speak it. Denver, on Wednesday in suburban Denver, around 1. Oh, high school students participated in what was the largest yet in a series of student demonstrations. They were protesting to oppose a new set of high school history standards. The standards would focus class material on topics that promote patriotism and respect for authority while discouraging civil disorder. So again, I just ran it through. I turned on readability, the open dyslexics on there, and I can just highlight it, and it read it to me. So that was three apps I put into the one. Um, so again, for some of our students that do have difficulties reading, this is one thing where you know dis less distractions, and it will read it to them. If you click up on the speaker uh, on the different extensions, this, you have different features. Like I said, you can slow it down. You can get a ma male voice or a female voice. So there's a lot of features in there. Um, okay. So that was, again, readability and speak it. Again, you can use it with the other ones. I just I like speak it. It was just easier. I can just right click and highlight. So uh, personal preference. OK. Readability, time for uh, Some social and communication uh, extensions. Bitly is a uh, URL shortener. I know Lisa Highfield used the Bitly for her uh, presentation. It just, so when you have that long link, that long URL, instead of like highlighting that, you can just right click it, and it will give you a shortened URL. Um, and then you can just paste that somewhere. I, Bitly's good. I prefer uh, the Google URL shortener. That's the same premises. You can right click it. This one also here is a Chrome extension where you can highlight. And if you hit smart QR code, it will give you your little uh, QR code. Do you know what QR codes are? They're around here. I heard people refer to it as a digital vomit. Um, it's just, <laughs> I don't know, it just stuck with me. Um, so then you, with your smartphones, you can take a picture of it, and it will bring up that link. Uh, so it's easy to grab through. And I believe on each of the doors, tie into that, there's the uh, session evaluations the, for each session. So on the way out with your smartphone, you can just go bloop, and then you can do it right on your phone. So now with this extension, you can just create these QR codes for anything on the web, so photos or pages. 
Uh, anyone use Google Hangouts? Nice. I'm, I'm, a, I'm surprised already uh, in your extension if someone mentions it, because in Google Hangout, it's just not video. You can do chats. Um, I usually, it's turned on. I usually get a bloop, someone mentions it or talks to it. So you can go through and turn it off. But I'm in a project group where everyone's at different time zones. So we just mention our work projects through there or, OK, you're doing this. So our task manager makes sure that we're on pace. TweetDeck's another one. How many are on Twitter? How about TweetDeck? Yeah. TweetDeck's good because it's going to break down four columns, uh, up to four. And then you can, uh, you know, one is your live feed, and you can put hashtags of certain things. So you can do CapQ in a column. And whatever someone uses the hashtag CapQ, it will show up in that column. And then there's one of your name if anyone mentions you. Mine's a little short. No. Um, <laughs> So you can keep track of all of that on there. And so that's just one of the tabs. You can click on it, and it will open up a new page, and it will have your tweet deck. This is the Google URL shortener. Uh, so this is one of Google services. Again, I like it because, again, once you log into a Chrome, it's already one of your apps that you have subscribed to. You don't have to, bit.ly, you have to subscribe to it. But once you're logged into Chrome, it's already going to your account. So if I wanted to go to a website, this one again, if I right click it, it's not showing up there. Let me go back to the. Right down here, shorten this page with uh, Google Shortener. I can click it here. Or it's this one up here with the little vice. I can click on that also. So if I just click on this, I can copy it to my clipboard. And it's going to shorten it down for me already. So it's right up here. So if I click on it, it's going to take me to that site. So that's the, the extension. Again, I like it also when you're quick and fast. If I want to share this. Right click, or I just hit the vice, and it's going to give it to me right here. So I can copy it. I can even create a QR code from it up here. So it's just a simple click on that button. All right. All right, so those are some of the social ones. So a, a key thing also with Google is the powerful search engine. So there's some search tool extensions also. Google Dictionary, which I desperately need. Um, if there's any word that you see, again, you can double click on it. And it's going to pop up with a small bubble of what the definition is if you're not aware of it. Uh, you can also store it in the history for future words. So this is something that you just kind of turn on and just within when you need it through your documents, you can just access it really quick. Google Voice Hotbox. This is when you go to Google.com. If you have microphones, it's funny when uh, we have the microphones turned on a class with Chromebooks. If, uh, Make sure mine's turned on. OK, Google, find hot dogs. Oh, oh, I didn't say it fast enough. Uh, let me go back to the home page. OK, Google, find Joe Wood. Smoky Joe Wood. So what's funny is you go into a room if this is turned on with Chromebooks and on that page. If you just say, OK, Google, you're going to hear bloop, 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 bloop on all, uh, multiple ones. <laughs> you didn't get bloop, 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 bloop. All right. So again, that's, uh, that's the search engine. That's an extension that you can just put in there. Um, that's the, the hot word. Uh, it's funny also if you see people with the Google Glass. Have you seen them walk around? Just walk by them and say, OK, Google Glass, and it will chime. <laughs> Highlight to search. So this is another one, an extension, if you're curious what the word is. You can just highlight it and right click it, and then it will search that keyword for you. So it's just another search tool. Um, and here's a different one. It will highlight on the page. 
It just won't take you to it. It's going to highlight every time it shows that word, it's going to be a different color cursor. And Google's quick search I love, but it's very temperamental. It works well on Wikipedia. Again, Wikipedia is not your ultimate source of information. It's a great launching point uh, to refer to some more. So let's see. Um, let's search. Let's see if this shows up. So I'll show you to, uh, let's go, is, if I go to the Wikipedia, for example. So if I go through here, if I start scrolling, ah, it's not coming up. See, it's temperamental. Sometimes it comes up. It will give you what you're looking for. You know the search I just did? It's going to post up here, and it's going to highlight it every time it's on that page. So let's see. What was that Joe, Smokey Joe Wood? Is that what? Smokey. Smokey. Let's see if this, we can get it. Joe Wood. Let's see. Of course, it's not going to come up when I want to. Well, we do know now that Smokey Joe Wood looks like a baseball player. Oh, come on. All right. It failed me. Every time I show, try to show this off, it doesn't work. Trust me, it's really cool. Uh, is it All right. I'm going to jump ship on this one. It's let me down too much. But again, if, a lot of times if you're searching sentences, uh, or a, a quote or a phrase, you can type in that quote. And if you go to Wikipedia, it'll highlight it on the page, and you can see who said it. Um, and then you can launch from Wikipedia to a reliable source. PicMonkey, again, we can save it to PicMonkey and then edit it when you find an image is if, with the extension. Fodor is the same one, same kind of thing. It saves it to the uh, Fodor.com account. So, and then you can edit it from there. GIF movie, this is, these are funny. Uh, it can convert any HTML5 video to a GIF, a G-I-F. So a GIF is kind of like an image. Um, so it's great because if you go to YouTube, if there's a YouTube video, it takes the sound out. So it's kind of like, It'd be a great like uh, story starter, you know, explain what this video is doing and or fill in the blank with dialogue of this video. So it's going to grab it and put it as a GIF. And what's great about GIFs, the animation, the animation part, it will work in Google Slides. So if you're doing a, a, a presentation with Google Slides, you can bring in that GIF in there and have that animation. Window resizer is another one where you can resize your window in order to you know, evaluate various resources. This is a great one too, a new one I found. If you go to a website and you want to see in that image where it came from, you can right click it and you find the robot and it's going to trace the source of that image. So if someone copied it from Wikipedia and put it on their web page, and if you right click it, you can see that they grabbed it from Wikipedia. So you can trace back the source. So if you want the original source of an image, this is a great one to use, the tiny eye reverse image search. Pop out YouTube video is also a great one. If your schools do allow YouTube, do, is your schools using YouTube? Good. Um, when you're playing a video in YouTube, it'll have a little button where you can click on it, and it will pop it out into a new window. So then you can shut down the original YouTube, and you can have that standing alone. So you're not going to see the garbly gook on the side or underneath. It's just going to pop it out in its own window. Turn off the lights is something similar in YouTube. So let's go to YouTube. Uh, Tube.com. Let's see, introducing Nexus 7. As it's loading. We've been pretty busy over the last year or so. Just last October, 
All right, so it looks like I don't have pop-up YouTube on, but I do have turn off the lights, which is, you see this little light bulb here? What it's going to do is it's going to dim everything on the screen except the video. It doesn't take it out all the way, but it just dims it. See, so if you're playing this video in the classroom and so it kind of dims it out. All right, so that's uh, dim it. So that's dim the light. So again, the pop-up video, if I moused over it, a little button here will say pop out, or it'll be an arrow pointing outwards. And you just click on it, and it's going to take this video, whoop, put it in its own window, and then you can minimize the other one. Because again, I don't know how, many, how frustrated I am. You have this here, and then you, nine out of 10 times, it's going to be something off topic or inappropriate. And you're trying to, oh no, look over this way. Don't look over there. Really hard in middle school. Woo! All right. Turn off the lights. Picasa extension. I like Picasa because it is Google. And again, it's just another image. You can grab images and copy and edit them. Screencastify, a lot of uh, topics these days, you know, flipping the classroom. This one, again, is you can screencast your video, or if you're doing like a tutorial online and you want to show them where to click and point, it will record your screen. So it's kind of like the, the TechSmith uh, screenshots, uh, I meant uh, video tutorials. This is one that's built in. Um, again, going back to the Snagit, same thing. You can record the video. Uh, so again, like I said before, it's great when a teacher had me question, had a question. This is great for your students if they have a question for you. You can store it, store that video, maybe have it on your website. So if they ever have questions, they can always go back to it. Uh, so tabs, I don't know how many of you open up multiple tabs. I am so guilty of this. I have them going all the time. So when this little discovery came of all these extensions for tabs, it was like, oh, I found it. Uh, so other ones are tab clouds. So again, this will save all the tabs that you had open. And let's say you accidentally shut it down. It will save it. You can pop it up, and it will bring all your tabs back. One tab is another one where if you have multiple tabs open, if you click one tab, it becomes kind of like its own tab. Off to the side, it will say one tab. And if you click on it, they look like bookmarks of all your tabs that are open. So like you can have 12 tabs open but you won't see them across the top. It's going to save it all into one. On that one, can you like, sort them or have multiple one tabs? No, you can't. And it, it's based on time also that it's open. So like uh, for me, if I open a tab, I knew I did it a while ago earlier this morning. So I can see it's kind of like a timeline. I can find it on there. Uh, too many tabs is another one. It's going to focus it down to one. Yes, I've tried having 20 tabs open. Tried, I often do have 20 tabs open. Pinterest tab, how many are on Pinterest? You can pin it. That's what this one is too. If you find something, it's a little button, it'll pin right to it. And you can open it up in a new tab. So it just adds to your Pinterest addiction. With, there's that new one like Pinterest, but it's just for food. I forget which that one is, and that's how I save my recipes. Yeah. Tab band manager is another one. You can quickly navigate between multiple Chrome tabs. I'm trying to get to tab scissors I like. Okay. So tab scissors, so I have a couple of them up here. So if I go to tab scissors, right up there, it's a little one with the scissors. If I click on it, what it does is it cuts them in half in equal proportion. All right, so then I can see both. How I use this is I'll have a Google Doc open here. And if I'm reading or researching over here, I can copy like an article, a quote, and paste it into my doc. So again, there's my uh, multitasking, which I should not be doing. Um, but I can have two windows going open at the same time. Now, based on that, oh, it just cut it off. Uh, let me see if I stretch this out. There we go. 
Next to tab scissors, what's that kind of look like? It's a glue bottle. So it's tab glue. So what do you think that's going to do? I just tab scissored. Tab glue is going to bring them back together. So I click it, and it's going to bring them all back as one. It's a separate app by the same maker. So it's tab glue, tab scissors. All right. So you always have to have the glue with scissors. That's right. Works with tab, tabs, not with hair. Huh. All right. So tab scissors. It will split them up. I what I really like is it does it equal. You know, it splits your screen exactly. I don't know. That's my you know, everything's got to be in order. Uh, and then there is tab glue. Uh, so again, I can't leave without having some fun. So here are some fun apps, fun, fun extensions that you can play with. What a font. Again, going back to my kindergarten side, all kindergarten teachers, what do they love? Fonts. All right. So um, I can go to any web page. So if I, let me turn off the open dyslexic. All right. Uh, Why can't I find it? Because I don't know what ABCs. All right, so I turn it off. Let me hit refresh. And waiting, waiting, still spinning. Get it back to the normal. All right, so there's the font. I don't know if, if have you ever analyzed and go, OK, I think that's Arial. I think that's whatever. So now tab font, you got your font and your question mark up here. I click on it. And when I mouse over, it's going to tell me what the font is. All right. So and that's on any web page. So again, if you're a font nut like myself, and I know Jen is too, uh, these are great ways where I can grab that and use it in my flyer or my document or whatever I like. So again, that's on any. To turn it off, I just click it again. So fun, just a fun tab. Again, uh, what, a, what font? is one. Move it, it's another one that's uh, kind of like for your mental break. You can set it for a certain amount of time. And it'll say, move it, and it'll give you things. Run in spot for 15 seconds. I learned about this one that a teacher does it in the classroom for their students. So while they're working on it, it's like, you know, get up out of your chair, stand up 10 times. It gives you like activities. So it just randomly pops up like that. So you know, you're not sit at your desk the whole time. So at least get the blood flowing and moving. Google Chrome to phone. This is the one that I was telling you about. Again, this extension allows, adds a button. And it will push your website to like your phone or so to the map. A lot of times, how do I, <laughs> I got lost going yesterday to a school. Um, this would have been great. I could have brought up the, the map and pushed it out to my phone. I just did the, OK, Google, get me to make sure it didn't turn on. OK, and, and just name the school, and it gave me the directions. But this would have been great to just to push it out, send it this way. Custom Google background. Again, this is a lot of people ask. This is this page here. When you open up a new tab and you have your background here, you can customize that color with a, uh, like a cityscape or whatever image you like with that custom Google background. OK. It's just a few more. Stumble upon is a hugest time waster, but I love it. Um, you, you sign up on this account, and you have this little stumble upon button up in your browser bar. And you just click on it, and you, just, you get on this long train of websites that you just stumble upon. And it's based on your preference that you set up beforehand. So you can say, I like technology. I like you know, sports, football, and even get down. And then it's just going to kick ones to you. So instead of going out and finding the information based on your likes, you hit stumble upon. Like I said, it's a huge time waster because, oh, I like that. Let's hit stumble upon again. So I found a lot of great resources that way. It's just by I stumbled upon it. So stumble upon is another fun app, a fun extension. Confetti. All over, what else? That's the name of the extension. Um, so what that is, so Newzella, I have my little confetti down here. And so if I hit it, and confetti. <laughs> it 
Pin it button, that is just like the pin in Pinterest. If you log into your Pinterest account, um, if there's an article on there. Pinterest is great for teaching uh, lessons and stuff. So you can find lessons on Common Core. You can hit it, you get put it underneath your category, and it's going to save it to your own. What is your favorite one? So what I did, I compiled all of those extensions together. I ranked them through forms. And then this is what they came up with. So from 10 to 1, what are the top 10 extensions that they said? Tab Scissors was number 10. I wonder what number 9 might be. No! Oh, no surprise there, Tab Glue. Number 9, number 8, one tab. Again, I'm not the only one that has 8 million tabs open at once. Number 7, cite this for me. Number six was Announceify. Number five, Awesome Screencast. Number four, TLDR. I got to say, I like that one. I'm, I'm guilty. Number three was Adblocker Plus. Number two, Save to Google Drive. And the number one, Snag It. Again, a lot of you know, capturing those images that you want to save it on there. All right, so one more thing to explore on your free time. I hope you copied this presentation. You can go back through. If not, I'll have it on the CAPQ, the session website, um, so you can copy and save it, is these Chrome experiments. All right, so in the Chrome browser, uh, it's, there's all these different experiments that you can go through that they've made. Um, so fireworks, uh, let's launch the experiment. So it's now loading. So these are their games. That will get your attention. Forget confetti. So these are numerous uh, little experiments that programmers have made in, in Google Chrome. This is where, I don't know if you've explored Build It With Chrome, it's the Legos. That's where this started from, was experiment. It's almost like, I don't want to say it's Minecraft, but it's, you have a Lego board, and then you can build Legos, virtual Legos, onto that board. The great thing then is wherever you're building it from, so if your students are building with it, it puts it on Google Maps. It pins it based on GPS. I've also heard what other schools are doing is they're taking those images that they're building with Google in the Lego Build It With Chrome, and they're using 3D printers and printing out the students' creations. So again, this is a lot of the uh, Google experiments. There's a lot on here. The Boo Box. This here is, come on, it uses your keyboard. 26 sounds, 26 letters. Here you type your name. Oh, I don't want to turn it. So you have your own little sound studio here. Again, could be a time waster. Trust me, I think it might be. Um, so again, thank you again. Please grab this uh, presentation to go back because I know I flew through it. Uh, hopefully something jumped out that you were able to try and play. So thank you and enjoy CapQ.